Water hyacinth was first reported on the Kenyan side of Lake Victoria eight years ago. Initial infestation were in Kendu Bay, Muhuru Bay, Siot Port and Port Victoria. But in recent years, estimated infestation levels have shot up to around 5,000 hectares. The invasive weed has had an adverse social economic impact on the communities of Lake Victoria. Here, in the Winam Gulf, fishing, lake transport and water supply have totally been affected by the water weed. It hasn't has spread. It, it's not just in Lake Victoria. It's in Lake Naivasha. It's in Nairobi Dam. It's in rivers. Many of the rivers that feed into the Lake Victoria are carrying water hyacinth. Many of the rivers in central Kenya even, there is water hyacinth. In 2005, Kenya tried to control the hyacinth by adopting a biological control method. This method involved the introduction of an earlier generation of weed weevils to tackle the hyacinth menace. The venture achieved a near 90% success rate. But the success was short-lived as high-ranking government officials, including cabinet ministers from East African nations with affiliations to chemical companies, aggressively campaigned for the use of chemicals and harvesters instead to control the weed. This eventually led to the setup of various chemical companies in Kampala, Uganda, hoping to secure contracts to attack the weed with herbicides. Using herbicides on the lake is, is catast catastrophic. This is a living body with living organisms. So the, the chemicals you put there will end up killing all the fish. You know, it will change the whole microflora of the lake. So herbicides, in my opinion, and I think the opinion of our institute is they are not the way to go. At that time, the World Bank had allocated 9.3 million U.S. dollars in solving the water hyacinth problem as part of the larger Lake Victoria Environmental Management Project, meaning that the clearing was seen as a commercial opportunity by many parties. Seven years down the line, the water hyacinth menace has not yet departed. And those years we were able to use biological control, and that's when the water hyacinth went down. One of the Kenyan scientists who pioneered the weed weevil project revealed that the biological control method was working out pretty well and it was for the benefit of the millions of beneficiaries of the lake. He asserted that the group in charge of the weevils project, which is inclusive of counterparts in Uganda and Burundi, knew that within one year he could sustain the fight against the water hyacinth. But the powers that be thwarted their efforts to the determinant of communities living near the lake. According to Kari, the government is at an advanced stage of reintroducing the weed weevil as an ultimate solution to the water hyacinth menace. The beetles will get to a level where they are able to harmoniously, first of all, they don't attack anything else. They have been tested. The beetles will only attack the water hyacinth. So there is no danger that they will go and start attacking other things. The hybrid weed weevil which only feeds on water weeds has been introduced by the UK Environmental Agency in Great Britain to control the invasive Azola weed and the results have been remarkable. For Green Quest, I'm Shem Oluchiri.